Oh, apparently it's recording. Mm. Alright, I think we'll let it start. So the first thing you want to do is open up uh, your Visual Studio. Um, I think most of you installed the C Sharp 2010 Express. So you want to go to New Project. And what we want is a WP Windows Presentation Foundations application. So that's the second one on the list, I think. Double click on that. Wait a while if you've got a slow computer. <laughs> it's an old computer. I'm surprised it actually runs. <laughs> That's cool. Right. Um, so the first thing we want to do is set up the size of the screen. So go to properties, set the width to water, we'll make it 640 by 480. And we'll want to add a canvas because we're going to have, ideally what we're going to have in the product is going to have an image with three circles. The three circles are to show where you're tracking and the image is your video source. So we drag a canvas in. You'll need to get to the toolbox. You can get that by, I think, Control-Alt-X or through Weir. Um, go down to canvas, drag it in. probably want to set the canvas size to the same size as before, which was 640 by 480. And we'll want to add the, the parts so that we want. You have to pull the canvas on the top of the um, background or whatever it is? Yep, just, just drag it in. And then we'll add an image. Now you can have the image as big as you like. Um, for completeness, we might as well make it the same size as the canvas again. So it's not really all that important. It's just um, for visual purposes. And finally, we want to add three circles in. And these are just going to be where you track um, later on. We're going to have it track your body so we can see what's been tracked. They're called ellipses, actually. But I'm going to call them circles. So I'm going to make them circles. We'll make them 40 by 40. And we've got to give them a name. Let's give it, that can be the head. Copy and paste it. I change that to be left circle. It'll be our left hand. And make another one and make it be right hand. Well, right circle, sorry. So head circle, left circle, right circle. So that's got our UI sort of set up. It doesn't really matter where the circles are because we're going to move them. Uh, well, it's going to move automatically once it detects the skeleton. Um, also, setting up your environment, you'll want to set, um, add the references because this is, and you'll really need to do this for every project that you do. This is just so you know where um, the, the Visual Studio knows how to where your libraries are. Um, so there's two main things that we want to add. Oh, three actually. The first one is you go to .NET, and then you go to Microsoft.Research.Connect. 
and that's your main connect API. And the other reference you want to add is the coding for font thing that uh, you should have. So you'll have to go to browse and look for wherever that is, wherever you downloaded it to. And I forget where I put it. Let's try that. And in this one, the, there's two um, dills you can get. The one I use is just the no normal WPF one. And that's just because we're using uh, the, when we started our project, we used the WPF application. And finally, because we're going to try and connect, uh, control the PowerPoint things, we'll need to be able, the way we're going to do that is we're just going to tap into the system and sort of send the left and right arrow keys. Um, and to do that, we'll need to get windows.forms. Uh, System.windows.forms, I think. That one there. Um, there's two things that you'll, two main events that we'll want to do, and that's basically when we start the application, we'll want to start the connect. And when we close the application, we'll want to uninitialize and uh, tell that we're not using the connect resources anymore. Um, so to do that, we need to go to events on the side here. We'll look for loaded. Double click on that, which will create something. Go back to the XAML and find close. So that should just put the code in your thing. And now we can start actually writing stuff. Uh, are we, how is everyone following along uh, so far? Sorry, I just missed what you said on events. So you right. go to events. So you go to events, you search for closed and loaded, mm -hmm. and you just double click and it should put code in your thing. Yeah. So closed and loaded. And that should get you here. How's everyone else going? Following along? No comment. Okay. <laughs> um, the first thing we we'll want to do is the next thing we we'll want to do is initialize the runtime environment. So you go runtime, and now you can call it whatever you like. Um, this is outside the scope of the classes, so this is sort of like a global variable. Um, we'll call it NUI for natural user interface. Actually, before we do that, we need to tell the system we're using them. So using um, connect dot Microsoft dot connect dot runtime dot Microsoft research dot connect. And you want to use the coding for fun dot connect dot OPF. Actually, we don't want just connect. We want to get straight to the, because we're not going to use audio at all today, we just want to get the natural user interface, so NUI. And then we'll initialize that, and we'll call it NUI as well, just because. And so runtime NUI equals new runtime. So that, that's just creating the NUI, but we need to actually initialize it. So inside, when we want to initialize it when the window loads. So in here, we go NUI.initialize. And there's a few runtime options that we can have. Um, and this is what you'll have to do every time you set up your environment. You've got to pick which parts of the connect you actually want. There's use color. That's just your normal RGB camera. You can get your depth camera and then use skeletal tracking. Um, because we kind of want to see our picture, we'll use use color.
And we will also want to uh, track skeletons, so we'll add the other one as well. Um, now that we've initialized it, we also want to uninitialize it, and this part's important because otherwise the connect's just always going to run. Um, so you go new e dot uninitialize in the window closed. Has everyone gone? All along? Yeah. Cool. So after we initialize the runtime, uh, the first thing we'll try, we're going to split, split this up into three sections. The first thing we're going to do, we're going to get the camera working, so having the image pop up on the screen. Then we're going to get the skeletons <coughs> to actually track you, and so you can get the information about, you get the clips, the, the circles you made to follow your skeleton. And then after that, we're going to actually make it control the presentation slide thing. Um, so let's get the camera going. So you go Nui dot video frame ready. So this creates, um, this tells you when this fires off an event, whenever the connect sees movement or when it gets a camera event. And you go plus equals, and then you just press tab tab and it'll automatically create it for you. So if you press tab twice, And you also want to create, uh, or you want to open the video stream. So you go to video stream, and then you go open. Now, there's a few different settings you want to set here, but most of them um, will auto complete for you. So the image stream type is video, because we want video. The pool size, um, I can't remember why you pick pool size, but usually everyone just picks two for that. Um, and then the image resolution, because we started off, we'll just go for uh, 640 by 480. And the default connect uh, RGB camera is 640 by 480 anyway, so that works out great for us. And we want color. Now, whenever the video frame event fires off, we don't want to throw an exception. We want to actually do something. And this is where we actually use the coding for fun library. Because what we know, what you could do, so we're going to say, this take the image that we made earlier, and we set its source to be the camera screen. Now, we could do it a full way. What you normally have to do is set a whole bunch of variables, but the better way of doing it is using the coding for fun. You go e dot image frame dot to bitmap source, and that has all the parameters done for you. So now, if you run it, I believe, so control shift B to build it. You don't really need to do that by control, um, but you just press F5, it should run. And it's got an error. That's uh, it's not helpful at all. Oh no, there we go. Now I haven't actually set up the video. I didn't set up my canvas UI properly by dragging around, but everything is there. Um, I'll just try and fix that up. The people who have their connects plugged in should be able to get, see themselves, or should be able to have the camera come up. How's everyone going? 
Are you sliding or you have questions? I'm waving at the Uh, there's three circles. Um, yeah. They're just black, so you can't really see them. We can add a fill, make them colorful, bright. Um, so you select that and select the circle and go to fill and make it red, I guess. Any color is fine, but red stands out. the circles now. Okay, so I think the problem I did earlier was the first thing I set to where, where I set changed the size on the width and the height of the original window where it was automatic. Before it was automatic and I changed it to be fixed and that's why some of you when you start off things are off center and go on off places. So that was a mistake. Um, but it's easy to fix. You just drag things around. Is that working? Cool. We'll move on. So some of you seem to get to be working. Um, I might move on to getting the skeleton tracking to work. And if we, uh, after I finish, we can go through and make sure everyone got it working, um, got everything working. So. So the next thing we're going to try and do is get the skeletons to work, so getting it to actually track you. Um, so once again, we just have to fire off a skeleton tracking um, event. And that's, uh, you go nui.skeleton frame ready. And once again, plus equals, and then tab tab. And it should make it for you. You don't want exceptions when it happens. But what we do want to do is we want to um, find the skeleton that the first thing is what it'll what happens is it'll give you a frame with uh, up to two skeletons so it'll either detect a skeleton not detect that or detect one skeleton or detect two um, for our purposes we're just going to get to look through the first skeleton and track that one um, so the way we do that is to 
make sure I get this right. Your skeleton frame. So this gets all the skeleton's data. But we only actually want to look at the first skeleton. So we look through the set of skeletons and we only get look um, we only want the ones that are actually being tracked. So the actually I was wrong. The connect can actually detect six skeletons, but it only tracks two of them at a time. So um, it'll it'll know it can see that there's six people in the background, uh, up to six people in the background, but it'll only be tra uh, following two people. So out of the skeletons, we want to look through the ones that are tracked. It's not how you spell tracked. And we want to get the first one. Now we want to make sure that the skeleton actually exists. We don't want to start doing operations on null data. So if skeleton does not equal null, then we want to move the circles. So we haven't actually created anything, a uh, method for moving the circles, so we'll make that now. Um, void, we'll say set circle position. Strictly speaking, they are they're ellipses, but we made them circles, so I'm going to keep going through as circles. Now, the way that the connect tracks the skeletons is it has a set of I think 42 joints that it follows, and you can access them using the joint, and they all have a joint ID. So we'll get come back to that in a second. Um, so every time that we find a skeleton, every time the skeleton moves, we track it and we want to fire off, uh, we want to do something um, with the joints. So we call this, we want what we want to do is we want to move the circles. So we go set circle position and we're looking at the head circle. Yes. So the first one is the name of your circle that you want to move. Um, probably be ellipse one if you didn't change it at all. Right. So on yours, we'll make ellipse one your head. Now we look through the skeleton, we get its joints, but we want to look by its joint ID. Um, so joints is actually an array of joints, but each joint has a position and a whole bunch uh, and position sort of depth of information and quite a few things. We might come back to that. Um, and we we just want to get past the right joint. So we want the head. So we go joint ID dot head. This is that first one. Uh, we want to call it again. Uh, we want to move the oh, left hand, I guess, left circle. Same thing again with
So now every time something moves um, and it's detected as a skeleton, it will pass, it will call this method, which currently does nothing. What we want to do is we want to make it get position of where you saw your hand and move your circle to, to match that. Um, so the way we do that is you go, can because we originally added everything to a canvas, um, yep. inside the canvas. Probably don't need a grid. So we want to set the left and right position of each of the circles. So canvas dot set left. Um, the element is the circle, and the position is going to be you go to joint dot position. But we want the left, so that's your x value. So each position, the connect gives you um, for each joint, it gives you an x, y, and a z. Um, so X and Y is your, um, I suppose, 2D image, and then Z is the depth. Now, depth can go between, I think it's 0.8 of a meter up to four meters back, um, but you usually don't want to work with all that, so we can set those values. And it's stored, uh, X and Y are stored in uh, numbers from minus one to one, I think. But we just want to set it, the joint position to dot X, and is that right? Oops, it's at top to circle. If you run that, and I have to realign everything because I changed the canvas. So now if you go, should hopefully track me, no. So something's missing. It might be all oh right. I know what's missing. So as I said, everything's based off um, number zero point one to not to so zero zero zero. So just times everything by the size of your screen. I think that should work. Your scale is 
Okay, so as you can see that the scale is wrong, and that's by on purpose actually. So what we <laughs> it actually is. Um, so what we want to do to fix that is we want to scale everything to base um, to match your thing. So instead of doing the way we did, instead of doing times six by forty, you can either do maths here or you can use the coding for fun and use uh, another library thing there. And the one we're going to use is the scale joint. So you're going to scale it by going joint dot scale. Six forty by four eighty. So now it's going to scale all your values to what you like, but even that won't work as perfectly as you'd like it to. Um, and I'll show you why. Joint dot position So as you can see, it scales everything down, but it's not um, really tracking all that well. So what you want to do, instead of just scaling to 640 by 480, you want to make it um, scale a little bit more and shrink it down so you don't actually have to reach up and move around. The scale used to work much better than that. I think they used to. Be there, scale. there is a way to smooth it, um, and I can go through that. But we're running out of time, so I might just get it to quickly fire off events. It, I mean, it does sort of track you. Um, if I get time, I'll go back to fixing that up. Uh, I just want to quickly run through how to get it to control something and how you would actually use this to make something. Because it's all good and well to be able to track and use the skeletons and stuff, but you can't actually use it. Um, There's not much point. So just quickly run through that. Um, what you want to do is every time you're changing that, you also want to process it. So we'll make another pro uh, method called process um, gestures, I guess, and we we'll want to pass it each of these things. So we want to pass it each of the joints. Now, if I was coding better, I would have made this a little bit more modular, so I wouldn't have to copy and paste. But I do. And right. Now let's create this method. And so essentially all we're doing is checking, doing a whole bunch of if statements based off the x and y positions, or, well just the x positions actually, of the joints. So if the heads um, x value is greater than um, the right hand. So let's go less than. So we, what we're going essentially how we're going to do it is um, based on if you're standing at here. And instead of doing a full gesture, because we don't really have too much time, what we can do is, if I lift my hand further away from my body, so once a person passes a certain level away from my body, then I'm trying to probably do something like that. And so we can fire off the event, or we can, yeah, tell it what to do. And if it's, if I'm using my left hand, and my left hand relative to my head far away from my body, then we can do something. So that's what we're trying to set up. Um, we'll just set 
what distance that is, how far away our body needs to be. So I think this would be half a meter. Uh, distance. If you want to do something, and move to right. And copy and paste that for the left position to greater than. And now we're just using the simple visual code that we normally do in Visual Basic or C C sharp to call anything, and that's system dot windows dot forms dot ways. Um, let's send the right. So I suppose if we just test this out, um, it's not perfect, and but what should happen is should go here. And if I'm tapping to the right document. When it tracks me, wherever I am. I can now control the cursor <laughs> of that. Now, because it's a PowerPoint thing, you don't actually want it to fire off this event so many times, but you can fix that using a Boolean statement, yeah. just saying if it's fired once, then don't fire until I've gone back. Um, so, in about half an hour, you made a very simple connect application that does the, it. You got your camera, you got your skeleton, and you got to control something. Um, I think we're going to get kicked out soon. I think there's a lecture and afterwards, so we might wrap it up. Um, thanks for coming. We've got prizes, and I think James has a um, announcement to make. Join it on the report. I don't know. Yeah, I was just going to say, if anyone's interested in doing some development work.